It is yucky out. No, it's 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 going to be raining all day, so. So let a smile be your umbrella. Shut up, Shut up and, and sit, sit down. down. Connectors, what's up? DK here. Hope you're having a good day. It's a little dreary out in South Central Pennsylvania, but that's okay. We're going to make it just a little bit sunnier. Question Wednesday. So I take questions from you guys through social media, either on Facebook or on Twitter, and I try to answer them as best as I can. Special Question Wednesday because it is National Pretzel Day, so go get a pretzel. Let's do this. Is that your real hair? Yep. What's the one piece of advice you'd give to a new board member who has never served on a nonprofit board? Use the question why to your advantage. You're new, you can ask questions like, why is this budget this way? Why do we spend this amount on this? Why do we do our fundraising this way? Ask a lot of why questions. One, because you're gonna gain great knowledge that you can use and help yourself in being the ambassador that a board member is to an organization. And two, it might spur on conversations that quite frankly may have been sitting and not asked for a very long time. Why opens up a ton of opportunities for you to get creative, get interesting answers, get feedback. So constantly ask why. We're a small nonprofit and we have no budget. How am I going to market ourselves? Mibwa. Manage by walking around. Your best amount of marketing is face-to-face, -face friend raising. Get out in front of people. Ask your board, your staff, you. Get out there and say hi to people. Press the flesh, as they say in politics. Grip and grin. Seriously, that's... You should do that. But also, secondarily, social media is still strong. I am telling you, I know folks are jumping off some of the trains like Twitter and Instagram, but Instagram visually is a wonderful tool. Facebook is still amazing. It's got a large membership. It's got an active membership and the dynamics you can use with video, with Facebook Live, with photos. Content is king when it comes to marketing like this. And because it's free in social media, it's a great tool for you to put a lot of information out. So get creative in your content. So get out there, Mibwa, managed by walking around and social media, specifically Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. These videos are fun to do. Don't be afraid of them. Look, if I can do it. Favorite color? Does black count? If not, I'll go orange. Favorite food? Apparently everything. But if I had to pick one, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of pizza. Beer or wine? Yes, please. Where do you get your news? Honestly, I sort of mix around. Uh, MSNBC, Washington Post, our local paper, the York Daily Record. I, but I must tell you, and I know my wife's going to make fun of me on this, but I, I watch C-SPAN. I know, I know, I know. Favorite band? Jeez. I, that's super hard. Back in the day, honestly, truthfully, Van Halen was my favorite band. But, man, oh man, I, I, like, I like a whole bunch of different music, so it sort of varies. I mean... If you saw my iTunes playlist, it's ridiculous. Uh, I can go from Black Crows to Benny Goodman. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to stay with Van Halen because they were the ones. And Van Halen with, with David Lee Roth, the early stuff. I like Sammy Hagar a lot, and I think they were really good, but, but the original Van, original, original Van Halen. Best piece of advice for new executive director? Be badass. Be bold. Push things forward. Don't settle. What do you say to a board member who says, I don't know how to ask, I, I'm not good at fundraising? Well, if you're having this conversation and they're already on the board, I would first suggest there might be a, a problem with your board selection. But if your board member is asking you and not to know, get some support for that. If you feel comfortable about your fundraising and your fundraising ability, go ahead and one-on-one. -on -one. If you don't, hire somebody, bring in a consultant, bring in someone, bring in someone, just kidding. Bring in someone who can really talk to the board members and really share the ideas of fundraising. Not everybody can fundraise. I get it. I know it's very difficult to ask for money, but you really have to be sure that all hands on deck when it comes to fundraising. And so you have to learn to friend raise and fundraise. If your board is not helping with that, you're going to be in deficit. 
always. You got to have all hands on deck when it comes to fundraising. Best show on TV? I, you know, I don't really watch a lot of TV. Uh, the, the stuff that I watch or my wife watches, it, it's usually on something like a Netflix or Hulu or something like that. So I, I don't really know because I don't really watch. I, I mostly watch news and, and live sports. Um, but I really was digging into the Badlands. I thought that was a really cool show. And uh, all the Netflix Marvel stuff, uh, yeah, I geek out to that stuff. So Daredevil and Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. And I, I even like the Iron Fist, I know. But I think all those are, are pretty good. Biggest struggle in the nonprofit sector? The sector itself. We think of ourselves as charity, as extra. We use all these silly words and, and it, it really diminishes the amount of power and respect that the sector should have. We're the third largest sector in America. Over 11 million people work for nonprofits. We have a greater positioning that we need to make. We need to have that seat at the table. And we need to say we want that seat at the table. Very often we're sort of afterthought. Or only the big nonprofits, the large community foundations or the large healthcare systems are the only ones that, that sort of wield this kind of influence at ways. And we are really the, the tipping point when it comes to community development. So. It's just that we need to get involved in our own best interest more and be proud of our sector. Nonprofit power. Worst part of the job of a nonprofiteer. Grants, grant filings, grant forms. We are way over bureaucratic when it comes to stuff like this. We can't think of new innovative ideas. We think we're suggesting new innovative ideas, but really what we're putting is we're putting into boxes and files and forms. We're about this close away from DMV world of bureaucracy. I wish we could really get rid of most of that stuff, make it more streamlined, make it better for our innovation. What do you really think of social enterprises? I love social enterprise. I think, I think social enterprise is a brilliant idea. I think businesses that really sort of commit value-wise to their bottom line being a triple bottom line, not just profit to themselves, not just support from their stakeholders, but to the community at large. I am a huge fan of organizations that really commit themselves to that. I'm also very excited and interesting to explore more the idea of nonprofits themselves converting more into social enterprise so that they are less reliant on things like, well, like I said before, like grants and, and fundraising in the most traditional sense, uh, ways that they can bring in direct and indirect services bringing company ideas to a nonprofit. I know there's a pushback in the sector about how nonprofits need to be more like businesses. Uh, I, I think we should take some business savvy, but no, I think we need to have our own stamp on things. I think being a nonprofiteer and working at a nonprofit is a very unique hybrid of good business and good be, good people doing good things. And uh, yeah, I think, I think we just need to be a little bit more secure in that. So social enterprise, big fan. Do you like animals? Well, I better. I got two cats floating around here somewhere, so the answer is uh, yes. But honestly, I wasn't really a big animal guy most of my life. But I got I got two cats and, and Earl and Izzy, and uh, they're pretty cool. Should I start a nonprofit, or should I look for another one? I'm not sure what look what another one means, but I just did a video. I'll put a link in the doobly doo below about this about how to start a nonprofit. And the first thing I always suggest is don't. First, look around your community and see what else is out there because very often we have a lot of nonprofits that are replicating services and doing the same work and don't even realize it and don't even know that they other, uh, exist, others exist in their community. So first, I would do a lay of the land and see what's out there. But secondly, yes, if you start a nonprofit, I think it's noble work. I think it's fantastic work. Uh, but first, see what's out there because you don't want to replicate service. We have a lot of replication in the sector. And sometimes the community needs it. Sometimes they don't. But yeah, get in, man. Nonprofiteering is awesome. Do you do live speaking gigs? Heck yeah. I actually love doing it. And it's a big, big part of what I do at Connected Dots Movement is go out to conferences and meetings and retreats and speak the good word of the nonprofit sector and being a nonprofiteer and having nonprofit power. So yes, I do that quite often. So if you're interested, you can email me right here. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll come out. Uh, you have a place and you have people and I'm ready. Seriously, how old are you? Why is everybody so obsessed with my age? Let's just say I'm old. I'm Gen X. Do you have a problem with this whole thing of millennials and baby boomers and how they work? I don't know why there's this thing about a problem with, with this kind of stuff. Every, every generation, the job of every generation is to piss off the generation before it. I think that's a punk rock thing that has always lived in our society because every generation thinks that they've got it better. 
I know. I I thought as a Gen Xer that the baby boomers we 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 figured it out better, and that all the things that they did right and they did wrong, we can either improve or get rid of, or that we were that, and then millennials came along. I don't know. I I think we have to understand, and we have to we have to have some empathy and understanding of what each in general what each uh, generation brings to the table, but. You know, I'm never a big fan of the one size fits all anyway. You know, look at this. I mean, I got I got this crazy hair, so people automatically think I'm sort of a crazy person, which I might be. But they may think a certain thing because of my 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 outside appearance and may not know all the layers of me. So, no, I'm not really no. What's the best part about working in the nonprofit sector? The people. That's easy. Anybody who gets into the nonprofit sector, there's passion and purpose behind them. Nobody wakes up and says, "I got to find a job. Let me work for a nonprofit." Uh, mostly because we have limited budgets and we have limited scope of, of work, and and uh, there there isn't really a lot of succession because there's not a lot of positions very often. You work at a small organization, but you know, even if you work at a large organization, a large nonprofit like a university or a hospital, there's purpose behind a lot of what people do. So I'm a big fan of just the fact that. I think fellow, fellow non-profiteers are all about purpose, purpose-driven, and I, I love that about them. Um, there are struggles within the sector for sure, but but there's one thing I think that the overarching thing that we can all agree on, and that is, uh, one, it, working for purpose makes it feel pretty good at the end of the day when you go home and you're beat tired or maybe at a long event or you had a fundraising gala or just have wrote a grant all day. At least you could take you could take some good stock in the fact that the work you did was meaningful. The second thing is uh, sort of tied into the people who work there. It's the people we serve, uh, whether you work in environment, education, arts, uh, human services. The people that we serve, uh, you get a general good feeling about what you do and who you're representing. So there's nothing better. Would you ever run for office? You know, before moving Connect the Dots HQ up here to South Central Pennsylvania, I lived in Washington, D.C. for 15 years. I was right in the middle of all. And uh, I loved it. I love love DC. That is that is absolutely my second home. But uh, I prefer to be sort of the guy behind the guy. I think I, as much as I like being on stage and like doing the bombastic stuff, I, yeah, probably guy behind the guy. So no, not really. I wouldn't want to put my family through the scrutiny of that stuff. But I love being at the seat of the table talking about policy. Policy is awesome. I, I know, geek, that's the C-SPAN thing. So guys, I'm gonna end it there. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. That was some really interesting questions. Some of them were actually nonprofit questions. A lot of them about me, so I don't know what that's all about. But if you have any other questions and you want them for another question Wednesday, here is my email once again, doug at connectedotsmovement.org. Or you can ask the questions on Facebook. You can also like and share this video. Uh, link right here, facebook.com slash connectedotsmovement. We're also on Twitter, and that is at we connect dots. So any way you want to send me some questions, please feel free to do so. This is also up on YouTube. So if you want to put a question in there, go ahead. Comments, you know, sometimes comments on YouTube. <laughs> anyway, I thank you so much for hanging out with me. I thank you so much for the questions. My name is DK. I'm with Connect Dots Movement. And you have just been connected. See you soon. Nonprofit Power.